Welcome to this video in which we uh, use AC steady state analysis to find an output voltage uh, given a sinusoidal input voltage. Uh, this will be an ad hoc analysis in the sense that we will end up using equivalent resistances and, or I'm sorry, equivalent impedances and voltage dividers to get the answer. So you can see the circuit that we have. Uh, we have an input of 5 volts at a radian frequency of 377 radians per second and we would like to find out the output voltage uh, again using AC steady state analysis. So let's get to it. Uh, the first step in doing this analysis is to recognize that 377 is our frequency so we'll note that for future reference and then to replace our voltages and currents, although in this case we only have voltages that we're interested in, with um, the appropriate phasor notation. So the source voltage will be 5 volts at an angle of 0 degrees. The Vout will replace with just a capital V out and this is the phasor representation of the voltage uh, that we want to find. The next step is to replace our impedance and our capacitance, I'm sorry, our inductance and our capacitance with the equivalent, equivalent impedances. So you'll recall that the equivalent impedance of an inductor is J omega L and if I work that out, uh, this will be ZL is J omega L, which is J times 377 times 70.4 millihenries. And if I work that out correctly, I get this is J is 26.5, or ZL is J 26.5 ohms. Okay. So we can take this and replace it by J26.5 ohms. Okay, our capacitor impedance ZC is 1 over J omega C, which I can write this way. and I multiply out the 377 by 100 microfarads and I get minus J 25.5 ohms. So I can replace this capacitance with minus J 20, well that should be 26.5 ohms. This should be 26 down here too. Okay, so I've completed step two of the AC steady state analysis. Step three is actually to do the analysis. And so let's clear out a bit of space here. The approach that we'll use to do the analysis is we'll first combine impedances. So we'll combine these two impedances. Uh, they're the this two series impedances. Then once we're done with that, um, we'll combine the series equivalent impedance with the capacitance. That will give us an equivalent impedance for the 0.1 ohm resistor, the inductor and capacitor. And once we're done with that, then we can apply the voltage divider to get V out. So Let's start by combining the 0.1 ohm. Well, actually, this one is simple enough. We can just do it. Um, let's clear away. Some of this stuff. Now we'll replace the resistor and inductor with a box 
and the impedance of this box is 0.1 ohm plus J 26.5 ohms. Okay, so that gives us the equivalent impedance of the series components there. Now we need to take this impedance and combine it in parallel with the uh, capacitor impedance. So we have then that this will be uh, the equivalent impedance is 0.1 ohm plus J 26.5 ohms times minus J 26.5 ohms divided by 0.1 ohm plus J 26.5 ohms minus J 26.5 ohms. Okay, so let's actually compute this using Wolfram Alpha. Oops. Okay, so we had um, 0.1 plus I 26.5 times minus I 26.5 divided by 0.1 plus I 26.5 minus I 26.5. We work that out and we get um, that the result is 7022 ohms minus J 26.5 ohms. Okay, so we can go back to our circuit and replace this whole guy here with this equivalent impedance. And again, we decided this was 7,022 ohms minus J 26.5 ohms. Okay, so we'll take this whole thing and replace it by an impedance box of 7,022 ohms minus J 26.5 ohms. Okay, so that gives us the equivalent impedance. Now, we can actually just use a voltage divider to get the desired output voltage V out. So we have V out is equal to 1K ohm that's the resistance that it's across over 100 ohms plus 7022 minus J 26.5 ohms plus 1K ohm and this is times 5 volts at an angle of zero degrees. Okay, well, let's go back to Wolfram Alpha and see what this gives us then. We have 1K ohm, which is 1,000 ohms, divided by 100, plus 7022 minus I 26.5 plus 1,000 times 5. And this gives us then a voltage of 0.615, well, let's call it 0.616 plus J.002, or in polar coordinates, this is uh, 0.616 at an angle of 0.19 degrees. Okay, so we go back here. We can write this now as um, 0.616 volts at an angle of 0.19 degrees. Okay, so um, we're almost there. We now have the phasor voltage at the output. So now we can go back and rewrite this as a time. Um, voltage and we have then 
that um, let's see v0 of t will be 0.616 volts cosine 377t plus 0.19 degrees. Okay, so that basically shows how to do this analysis. Okay, and um, it shows that for this angular frequency, omega is 377, which, by the way, is almost exactly 2 pi times 60. Um, so this corresponds to a frequency of 60 hertz, which, if you live in the United States, um, is the uh, frequency at which power is distributed. Um, so you can see that at this frequency, um, this circuit basically uh, changes the input from about 5 volts down to 0.616 volts. In other words, it significantly um, attenuates the input. So uh, this pretty much concludes this part of the video. I think I will create a second part of the video that shows what happens for values of omega that are significantly higher than this and significantly lower than this. Uh, the reason for doing this is one, it gives you yet another chance to see the analysis, and two, it gives you a chance to understand exactly what the circuit does. So in part two, we will go ahead and uh, redo this analysis for omega is 4000 and omega is 40. And we'll discover some interesting things. So thanks for watching. Uh, see you in part two.